Hi everyone, welcome to Limitless Really Good News Special for Children and Families. My name is Mark Greenwood and I have been hosting Really Good News through March, April and will be doing for the rest of the spring through into summer and we're really excited that you are joining us today to think about Easter. I just want to say a huge thank you to all the Limitless team who've put together this special programme for children and families. And I really hope you enjoy yourself. So let's give it up a massive round of applause for Limitless. Yay! Woo -woo -woo -woo. And welcome to Limitless News. My name is Emma and this is... This is... Hello! Oh, hi, um, I'm Eliana. And today we're going to have some really big news. Some really big news or a crossword? Um, it's really big news, not just a crossword. Some really, really big news. Yes, really big news. Really, really big news. Really big news. Really, really, really big news. Really big news. Eliana, what's the big news? Well, the news for today is that... It's hey. gonna snow! Uh, no, it's not gonna snow. It's better than that, though. It's better than that. It, it's what's better. better than snow? Uh, so Ooh. the news for today is basically that. What's gonna happen? It's the biggest Easter egg in the whole entire world is gonna be made. Uh, no, it's not that. It's better than that as well though. It's so much better than that. Eliana, what can be better than the biggest Easter egg in the whole entire world? Well, we can find out later on. <gasps> News just in. There's been sightings of something big, white and fluffy in somebody's garden. We're going to head over to M to find out more. Over to you, M. everyone and welcome to my garden. I need your help. Some very strange things have been occurring. Look! What? You see, what's been happening is I keep finding these little eggs in the garden. I didn't put them there. And sometimes... Sometimes... Did I hear something? Did you hear something? Look behind you! Sometimes I think that I, the noise, another noise, I think that sometimes I see a rabbit. It's behind talking. you! What? You saw something? Are you sure? Oh, it must be catching because sometimes I think I see a white rabbit and I'm not talking a nice little fluffy white rabbit. I'm talking a huge white rabbit. It's crazy, isn't it? I can't stay out here any longer watching for this huge rabbit. So I'm going to nip off and have a cup of tea and I want you to keep an eye out. Okay, I'm back in a minute. Everybody, boys and girls, hop to it! Count the eggs for me!
count? I think I counted 20. Yeah, 20, yeah. Emma, how many eggs did you count? Well, at the moment, Eliana, I've got about 10 eggs, I think. Um, Emma, I'm not talking about those eggs. I was talking about the eggs from the Easter Bunny. Yeah, but you see, the thing is with these eggs is that I can see them. I can definitely smell them. I can touch them. And if I really want to, I can eat them because they're chocolate. Wait a minute, that's not fair. I want some chocolate eggs as well. Well, if you take a little look under your seat, Eliana, I may have left you a little present before we started filming. Chocolate eggs. I left you your very own chocolate eggs because I thought that we could have a little challenge. You up for it? Yes. I thought that we can see who can eat the most mini eggs the quickest. Ooh, yeah. Are you down? Yeah. Okay, get ready to lose. Are you ready? I'm so ready. In three, two, one. Emma? Wait, 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 Eliana? wait. Did you hear that? Um, no. I'm sure I just heard somebody call our name. I didn't you hear didn't, it. You didn't hear it? No. Okay, let's try again. You ready? Okay, ready. In three. Two, two, one. Emma, Eliana, whoa, 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 whoa. Here? No, I definitely heard someone that time. Yeah, Did you hear so. them? Yeah. I mean, I, I, can, I can hear our names, but I don't really know. Oh, hang on a minute. Maybe it's coming from the intercom. Let's see what's going on over there. Hello. It's Abby. Abby from Motherwell. Yeah. Abby said she has more breaking news. More breaking news? Abby, um, let's go over to Abby in Motherwell to find out what this breaking news is. Abby, over to you. Thanks guys and yes I am here in Scotland and I am at some stables because I was told that there were some clues about here about something very big but I'm having a bit of trouble trying to find these clues so I'm hoping our viewers can help me find them so what do you say guys do you think you can help me you can't really okay so I'm looking for some pieces of card, I've been told. They're colourful, they've got lots of different colours all around them. But I can't find them anywhere. Can you guys see them? You can? But well, where are they? There's one behind me? So there is. Good job, guys. Right, let's see what this says. Do you want to hear about someone who loves you so much? Well, yeah, I do. What about you? So if so, you need to go where you'll find something large, cuddly, and always hungry. Hmm, large, cuddly, and always hungry. I know. Come on, guys, this way. This must be what the clue's talking about. He's very tall, very fluffy, and as you can see, he's very hungry. But apparently there's meant to be another clue here. If I can't see anything, can you guys? Hmm. Let's think. Can you see something? Really great! Where is it? What well, is next to the horse? So it is! Here it is. Now let's have a look. Do you want to know about someone who has saved more lives than Iron Man? Wow, I do. So, if you do, go where you'll find something cheeky, young, and very fluffy. Hmm. Hmm, let's see. Well, it can't be JR, because although he can be cheeky and is fluffy, he's not a young boy. I know where to go. Come on, guys, this way. Here we go. This must be what the next clue is talking about. So, this is, as you can see, is a very cheeky, it's a little fault, it's only eight months old. It's already taller than me. So it's young, it's cheeky, and it is very fluffy. So, this must be where the new clue is gonna be. But I can't 
can't see any of it. I can see the babies, but can you guys see another clue? This one might be a bit trickier to see, so have a good look around and see <laughs> Can you see it anywhere? Hmm. I know it's very tricky. Let's have a think. Can you see it? Oh, brilliant! Where is it? Oh, is it next to the other fall? Is this fall, is this fall hiding it? Let's have a look. Let's have a look and see what this one says. So, you were almost at the end. Yes, we're almost at the end. Now, do you want to know about something that is better than chocolate Easter eggs? Well, yeah, I love chocolate Easter eggs. What's better than that? Hmm, if so, go and find something that looks like a cloud, but is heavier than a brick. Hmm, looks like a cloud but it's heavier than a brick. What do you think, Alicina? Hmm, well it can't be these guys because they're, although they're fluffy and they're heavier than a brick, but they don't look like clouds. Have you seen a cloud that looks like this? No. Hmm, well I'm not sure boys and girls. I think we're going to have to look around. Hmm. Let's see, let's, let's go and have a look at some of the other horses and see which ones we can find. Come on, guys. Mm, no, I don't think this is the horse we're looking for. Very pretty though. But let's keep looking. Come on, guys, let's go and find another horse. I'm sure there's a horse around back here somewhere. Oh, hello, Dilly. Now, you're very small and cute, but I'm afraid you're just still not who we're looking for. The clue says something as fluffy as a cloud, and I'm afraid that's not you. <sighs> okay, let's, have, let's keep looking, guys, and find the next horse. Come on. Hmm. Well, that is a interesting smile. It's lovely, but it's still not what we're looking for. Now let's think about what the clue was saying. Looks like a cloud, but it's heavier than a brick. Hmm. We've checked all the horses, so it can't be them. Of course! I know what it is! <laughs> Come on guys, this way! A few moments later. Of course! Why did I think of a sooner? It's not a horse, it's the sheep. I mean, look at them. They're definitely as fluffy as a cloud. And I'm sure if I tried to pick one up, they'd be heavier than a brick. And look, everyone, here's our last clue. We've done it, we're done. Now let's see what this clue has to say. Do you want to hear some really good news? Yeah, of course. If so, then you are going to have to keep watching the Limitless Kids News to find out what the really good news is. Wow, that's amazing. I can't wait to find out what this really good news is. But until then, it's back to you guys at the Limitless Kids News. Bye everyone. Wow, now I'm really excited to know what the big news is all about. Me too, Eliana. But did you see on that last clip, um, Abby with the horse and the horse had the big smile like this. <laughs> Boys and girls at home, can you do a big smile and go, cheese? And there was also a horse that was trying to knock the camera over and Abby had to keep being like, get out of the way. But it just made me, it made me laugh, it made me laugh a lot. Yeah, all those clues have made me really excited to know that what the big news is all me about. Me too. I'm a bit thirsty now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Um, how are you pouring water out of your newspaper? I thought water came from a tap. Doesn't every newspaper pour water? Well, not to my knowledge, Eliana. I don't think that mine pours any water. Do you want something? I mean, I would, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say no to some water. I just don't get it. That's crazy.
Wow! Well, we've, we've, we've got our water from a newspaper. Um, I think that I'm ready to hear the really big news. Are you, Eliana? Yeah. Are you ready to hear the really big news, boys and girls? Yeah, yeah. We should head over to Doc and Sheree to hear what the really big news is all about. Over to you. Thanks, Eliana. We're coming to you live from Glasgow. As you can see, Shireen, we're getting it. right into the spirit of it. Easter here with our eggs, guys. We've oh. got some really big ones here, don't you think these are really big eggs? Really big eggs, boys and girls? Nah, I don't think these are really big eggs. Shireen, look at this. These are really big eggs. Do you want to help me get some more up? Oh, look. So, we have four really big eggs, boys and girls, and we are going to take you on a journey because we are sharing with you all the really good news. And I love surprises, so I'm interested to see what's inside these eggs. Me too, boys and girls. I'm really interested to see what's inside that, that really big egg. Right. Will I open it up? Oh, look at that. So we have a donkey and we have a palm branch. Jesus was riding on a donkey into Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And there was crowds gathering from all over the place. They were lifting their palm branches, waving it in the air, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. They were celebrating Jesus coming into Jerusalem because they really believed he was a messiah, he was a king. Shireen, that's what I had in this egg. What about yours? Do you want to open one of them? I will, but I want to have a look now because I'm really interested to see yeah. what's going to be in my egg. <gasps> Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I have a glass. Wow. And I have some bread. Wow. Jesus went upstairs with them in, a, in a room with his friends and they were sitting there, they were having a meal and we call that the Last Supper. So the last meal mm -hmm. Jesus ever, ever had with his friends. Jesus did have eaten something a little bit strange. Like it might seem strange to us at the time. He took the bread and he broke it. And he said to his disciples, this is my body broken for you. Then he did something with the cup as well. He took it, took a drink and he said, this is my blood that will be shed for you. Now, those are strange words for uh, Jesus to say to his disciples, don't you think, though? I would say so as well. Blood. Blood and bread, bread. body be broken. So the mm. disciples would have been going, what's he talking about? A bit puzzling, isn't it? It is a wee bit puzzling, Doc. Now, do you think your egg will bring some light on the story? Maybe so, boys and girls. Maybe so, Shireen. So I'll open my egg. Right, let me see. So we have some leaves and a picture of praying hands. Now, Shireen, did you know there's a special garden in this story and it's called the Garden of Gethsemane. Ah. And after the Last Supper, Jesus took himself and his friends and they went to this garden. Now, praying hands... Jesus wanted some time away from his disciples and all that was happening in Jerusalem and he went a further bit into the garden to a place where he was there himself. And what he did, boys and girls, he took some time out to speak to his Heavenly Father. Like us, if we're scared or worried about something, we go and speak and pray to our Father and that's what Jesus did. I think I should open my egg to see what would come in next. Though. I think so. And it's probably quite, oh, oh, that's quite interesting. Dot, look what I've got in my egg. I've got a crown of thorn. Yeah. I've got a cross. And I've got some wooden pegs. Yeah. What could that mean? I wonder. The story goes that after Jesus was in the garden, he knew that his time had come. He knew 
he was going to die. Now, boys and girls, that's not really good news, is no. it, so far? If we were following the story of Jesus, you realize that Jesus had never, ever did anything wrong in his life. But Jesus was going to the cross, so Jesus was taken to the cross. And he was nailed to the cross, so this is what the wooden pegs represent. And because, remember way back at the start of the story, Dot was saying he was the Messiah, they put a crown of thorn on his head as well. And they crucified him. Boys and girls, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not feeling so happy about this story, Dot. This no, is not very good news at sing. all, Dot. It doesn't sound good like he change. gets killed. How is that good news? No, that doesn't sound good news. No, that's not good news, Dot. I'm sorry, but and it's that, not. That can't be the end of the story, surely, she? Surely not, Dot. That cannot be the end of it. No. Do you know what? Do you know what? I've just seen. We have one more egg, Shireen. Can I bring it up? Yes, we've got one more egg, boys and girls. Hey, let's open it up. And look at it, boys and girls. It's golden. So it is. Let's open it and see. Oh, Shireen, look. Boys and girls, there's nothing inside that. Dot, are you sure there's not a secret compartment in here somewhere? No. Are you sure, De Dot? Definitely not. What's going on there? Boys and girls, how can that be good news having an it? Well, how is that good news? I think I know. So, we celebrate Easter with Easter eggs and inside an Easter egg is similar to the inside of a tomb. Yep, and that's where they took Jesus after he died. They buried him in a tomb. But do you know what, Shireen, uh -huh. boys and girls, after three days, Jesus came back to life again. So, Dot, mm -hmm. I, I think I get it now. I think I've got it, boys and girls. You think? I think this is really, really big news. I think what this represents. Does this represent the empty tomb, Dot? It certainly does, oh, Shireen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's really good news, Dot. Yeah. I'm so excited, boys and girls. Really wow. good news. Wow. So, boys and girls, what does that have to do with us then? This That's really true. good news. What does this story have to do with us? You know, the truth is, God actually wants to be your friend. And because of things we've done in our lives, that kind of separates us from God. Mm. Have you ever done, have you ever said something wrong? I think so. Let me ask you another question. Have you ever thought something wrong, God? I think so, Shireen. Okay, what about actually doing something wrong? Oh, I think I've done lots of things wrong. And we're not any different from that, boys and girls. We all do that. We've all said, thought, or done something wrong. And because of that, we are kind of separate from God because God can't look on us. He uses a word for that in the Bible. It's called sin. And it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What that means is, because we've done the wrong things and God is so holy, we can actually approach him. But the good news is Jesus came to bridge that gap. Yeah. Whenever we do anything wrong, say or think anything wrong, we have Jesus who stands in our place. Because you know the truth is, boys and girls, Jesus never actually ever did anything wrong. I mean, that blows my mind, though. I don't know if it blows yours. Definitely. But it blows mine. He never actually did anything wrong. But yet he was willing to mm -hmm. die for us so that we could have this relationship that Jesus wants us to have with the Father. Yeah. Now we've heard this story. Is there anything the boys and girls could do? Do you know what, boys and girls? We can have a relationship with God just like Jesus had with his Heavenly Father. So do you know how we can all have a relationship with God? It's easy as A, B, C. A, B, C. A, accept. Accept that we've done lots of things wrong. B, believe. Believe that Jesus took away all the sins and all the wrong things that we've done by dying on the cross. And C, confess. Do you know what? I have done things wrong. I've thought things wrong. And I want to be a friend of Jesus. So if you want to be part of the story, then say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I've done things wrong. I've said things wrong. And I've thought things wrong. 
I want you to come into my heart. I want you to come, become part of my life. Please come into my life, Lord Jesus, and forgive me for all those things that I've done wrong. I confess that I'm a sinner, and today I'm accepting you because I know that you died in my place on the cross so that I would not have to carry those sins and that I will not have to be separate from God and you want to be my friend. Please come into my life, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So here's the really good news from Glasgow. He is risen. Over to the studio. Bye, Eliana. Bye, Emma. Bye, Bye. Glasgow. So, we finally found out what the really good news is all about. The really good news is all about Jesus. Jesus! And I am so excited about this really good news and that you guys have finally been able to hear what it is. Because for me, I let Jesus into my life and it was the best decision that I ever made. Because the moment I said, Jesus, I want you to be my everything and I give my life to you, my life changed completely. So Eliana, what does the really good news mean for you? Well, the really good news to me means that I am free and I am safe and that Jesus always loves me. Amen. And Amen. this is because Jesus is risen and alive. Talking of being risen, I've just got some more breaking news that there's a giant party and celebration breaking out in people's homes and on the streets because of the news that Jesus has risen. And I've actually got some risen chocolate here. So Eliana, should we get our risen chocolates and join the celebration? We should. Let's go over and see what's going on.
my name is Catherine and I'm the early years worker in City Church Swansea in South Wales. And now after all that excitement of worshipping and dancing and celebrating that he is risen, we're going to take a few minutes just to reflect on what that means for us by doing a craft together. And I'm going to show you how to do that craft. So we're going to make an egg, you can see it, with a message inside and it says, he is risen. And I'm going to show you how to make that. So you don't need too many things for this craft. And you're going to need a piece of paper and a piece of card if you've got it. It will work with paper, just paper as well. Um, some colouring pens or pencils or crayons, a drawing pencil, some sellotape and, or glue and some scissors. Please be careful with the scissors. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get your card and you're going to draw a big egg shape like this. So you're going to draw a big egg shape on your card with a zigzag down the middle. And it's going to look a little bit like this. So oh, I think it's upside down. Whoops. <laughs> so it's going to look like that. So once you've done that, you're then going to spend as much time as you like decorating your egg. So this is what one of mine looks like. And I decorated another one and it looks like this. So you can spend as much time, you can use any little crafty bits and bobs, any eastery crafts that you like. And then once you've decorated it, we're going to cut it out. So we're going to cut around the egg and along the zigzag line. So I'm going to do that now. So I've gone all the way around the, oop, all the, way around the edge and now I'm just going to cut all the zigzags along the middle. So there we go, I've cut my egg into two pieces. So now it looks like a cracked egg. And we're gonna get now our paper. And just a strip of paper like this, I've just cut a little bit off an A4 sheet. And we're gonna fold it in four different places. So I've got a little template here. So you wanna fold it along these lines. So the middle lines, you're gonna fold it backwards like this. Fold it backwards, like that. So you've got, it goes in the middle and then these top lines, you're gonna fold forwards, like that. So if you didn't quite get that, you can rewind it and have another look. But it's gonna look like this, okay? And in this section here, you're going to write, he is risen, like this. You can see that. Then, once you've decorated it, so I've just done some squiggly lines underneath and some bright colours, you're going to turn your egg upside down, so like with the white bits, and we're going to stick the paper, the so Here's Risen message, on the back. So I'm going to get some sellotape, where well, the message has gone, they're hiding, there they are. Get one piece of sellotape, and I'm going to stick it to Make sure it's the right way up, and you're going to stick the pig message to the back of the top bit, like that, and then stick the bottom to there, and there is your finished craft. So you can close it and open it, and you can see your hidden message inside. So now it's back to the studio. So over to you, Emma and Eliana. Whoo! Wow! Today has been amazing. This has been the best news that I have ever presented on Limitless Kids. I don't know about you, Eliana, but I've had an awesome time. I so agree. It was so fun today. And if you want to know more about Jesus, always remember that you can ask your parents, you can ask some of your leaders to pray with you and to learn more about him. And if you just let Jesus into your heart for the first time, um, don't keep it to yourself, share it with people. Uh, the great thing about letting Jesus into your heart is that we're a part of a massive family called the Body of Christ and we would love to journey with you. And I know that those who love you uh, where you are would love to journey with you as you start your journey with Jesus in your life. 
So I think that's all for today. Yeah. Over and out. Have a great Easter, guys. Bye. This is the most important story ever told. Although it's very sad at times, it's also the happiest story. That's because it's true. Jesus was a man who traveled around his country, Israel, 2000 years ago, teaching about God. Jesus knew God because God was his loving father. Jesus did incredible miracles, like healing sick people, calming storms and feeding thousands of people from just five loaves of bread and two fish. That is amazing! Jesus promised people that God's King was coming and that his kingdom was free for everybody to enter. The crowds loved Jesus, but some religious leaders didn't like what he was teaching, especially his claim to be God. At this time, the people were ruled by the Romans, who were often very nasty and forced everybody to pay lots of tax, which is money you have to pay to the government. Unsurprisingly, people didn't like the Romans and looked forward to the day when God's King would rescue them. Many people followed Jesus, including 12 men who were his close friends. They are known as his disciples. One spring, after teaching for three years, Jesus and his disciples went to the city of Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. Passover reminded the Jewish people how God cared for them a long time ago and how he had rescued them from slavery. Because it was a feast, there was a special meal to remember the agreement God had made with them when he rescued them. As Jesus and his disciples went to Jerusalem, there was a lot of excitement. It was also a time when people offered sacrifices to God in the temple because they believed that these paid the price for what they had done wrong. Everybody, including Jesus' disciples, hoped that he was the king they were waiting for. Jesus, however, had warned his disciples that it wasn't going to be like that and that he was going to die and come back to life. The trouble was, they didn't understand him. So, when Jesus came into Jerusalem, he didn't ride in as a mighty king on an impressive horse as the people expected, but instead came on a gentle donkey. People cheered but they were puzzled. The most important place in Jerusalem was the temple. It was an enormous building where sacrifices to God were made. At its very center was a special room sealed off by a great curtain. Now, although the people knew that God was everywhere, they believed that this room was somewhere very special. It was as though it was the place where God lived. It was such an important place that only one man was allowed to enter it, and then just once a year. Ordinary people, like you and me, weren't allowed to get anywhere near it. Not at all. The temple should have been treated with respect, but when Jesus went to see it, he found it had become like a marketplace. It was full of noisy animals and people selling things to the poor and cheating them. Jesus shouted, you've let God's house become the home of robbers and told some people to get out. They didn't like that. Over the next few days, Jesus taught in Jerusalem, but many of the religious leaders wanted to get rid of him. But getting rid of Jesus wasn't easy. He was popular and Jerusalem was crowded with visitors. Then one of Jesus' disciples, a man called Judas, came to the bad leaders. If you pay me money, he said, I'll show you how to catch Jesus they agreed to his offer. The sacrifices for Passover were made on the Friday afternoon. The evening before that, Jesus held a special meal with his 12 disciples. He took bread and wine and told everybody that they were symbols of his death. Jesus also told his friends that he would be going away, but he would send them God's Holy Spirit. 
I'm going to make a new agreement between God and people, he said. His friends didn't understand what he meant. After the meal, Jesus went out with his friends to a quiet garden where he prayed about what was going to happen. As he finished praying, Judas arrived with soldiers to arrest him. Instead of staying with him, Jesus' friends ran away. Judas realized that he had made a terrible mistake, but by then it was too late. Early on the Friday morning, Jesus was brought in front of the religious leaders. They accused him of saying wrong things about God and of claiming to be God's king. Finally, Jesus told them that he was indeed God's king. That made the religious leaders angry and they sent Jesus to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, a man who had the power to put Jesus to death. Pontius Pilate soon decided that Jesus was innocent and should be set free. But the religious leaders and a crowd that had gathered demanded that Jesus be killed. The Roman punishment for their enemies was crucifixion, being nailed to a cross made from pieces of wood and left to die. Hoping that he could save Jesus from being crucified, Pilate had him beaten by the soldiers. It wasn't enough for the crowd. Crucify him, they shouted. In the end, Pilate ordered that Jesus should be put to death. Now the story gets as sad as any story can be. Jesus was taken away to a place where everybody could see him and he was nailed to a cross. Crowds gathered around the cross and people laughed and joked about Jesus in the cruelest way. Where were Jesus' disciples at this horrible time? Sadly, almost all of them had run away. But some of the women who had followed him stayed to watch what happened. As Jesus began to die, an awful darkness fell across the land. Day became night. It was as if Jesus was grabbing hold of every evil and horrible thing in the world and taking it into himself. Finally, Jesus died. As he did, the great curtain in the temple that separated the place where God lived from everybody else was ripped apart by some invisible force. It was a sign that Jesus had made a way to God for everybody. The sacrifices and the temple were never going to be needed again. As the sun began to set, Jesus' body was taken by a good religious leader and wrapped in cloth and taken to a private garden where he was put in a tomb that was like a cave. The tomb was closed by a big heavy stone. Meanwhile, Pontius Pilate ordered soldiers to stand guard around the tomb in case Jesus' body was stolen. Night fell. Saturday was a special day of rest when nothing was allowed to happen. It came and went. The women who followed Jesus knew that because everything had been so rushed, Jesus' body had not been properly prepared for the grave. So early on the Sunday morning, they returned to the tomb with the special spices needed for burial. But when they got there, they found to their astonishment that the soldiers had gone and the big heavy stone guarding the tomb had been rolled away. Looking inside, they saw that the body of Jesus was not there, but instead, neatly folded, was the cloth in which Jesus had been wrapped. It all made no sense. Then they saw an angel who told them that Jesus was no longer dead, but alive. The women ran back quickly to where Jesus' disciples were hiding and told them the news, but they found it very difficult to believe. That Easter Sunday, Jesus began appearing to his disciples and followers. At first, they found it hard to believe, but soon realized there could be no doubt that Jesus was really alive again. It was certainly Jesus because he still had the scars on his hands from being nailed to the cross. And he was really alive because they could talk to him, touch him and eat with him. It was very exciting news because Jesus had fought with death and defeated it. For 40 days, Jesus spoke with his disciples and followers. He turned up in rooms and on roads. He appeared to men and women, and on one occasion to hundreds of people. During this time, 
Jesus explained to his followers that God's king needed to die in order to be the sacrifice for the wrong things that we have all done. But because he was innocent, death hadn't been able to keep hold of him. Jesus was now the king who could give eternal life to those who trusted him. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Jesus also told his followers that they were to share this good news about him with the whole world and that wherever they went, he would always be with them. He promised that one day he would come back from heaven to earth and make everything in the world new and right. Finally, Jesus met with his followers and told them it was time for him to return to heaven. With those words, he rose into the sky and disappeared from sight. Jesus is God's King and we can know him and know that he will be with us forever. Pray this prayer if you would like to know Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I ask you to forgive me for all the wrong things I have done and come into my life by your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your peace, your presence and your power. Thank you, King Jesus. Please reign over my life. Amen.